So, welcome to the PulseOcPodcast.com screencast number four. And this is our third and final screencast uh, on the Citizenship Project. And today we're focusing in on the Reflection section, Section C, which in some ways is, to my mind, the most important, but it's the least valued in the marking scheme. And while it's very, very short, it is very tricky because you have to be very efficient with what you do in addressing this. You have to really fit things into the right space under the right heading so that you ensure you don't flitter away easy marks. Everything that I talk about today, uh, most of it is in, at least, is in the handout that's on the Citizenship Project page on palsockpodcast.com. Uh, and I've actually given a few extra uh, little examples in the video today. So you can see how to progress your mark up through the different stages from H4 to H3 and eventually up to a H1. So that you can see the quality of writing and layout particularly that's needed in this section. So a few of the common mistakes that occur throughout this section, and really the biggest problem is inefficiency. People uh, not doing what they're asked to do. Too much time spent rambling, talking around the point, rather than just cutting out all of the extra waffle or extra uh, fat and being lean with your writing. Sometimes people will do one section very, very strongly, you know, have an excellent uh, discussion of their skills but neglect the feedback and so they do one thing really really well but then don't have enough space in their word count to filter into the other areas and um, sometimes people write things which are interesting but just not under one of the categories in the marking scheme and therefore it's kind of redundant and it actually ends up taking up space that they should be using for other stuff Sometimes they say the same thing over and over, repeating themselves, kind of in what in English we'd call a tautology. You know, the same phrases, same ideas going over and over again. Uh, and sometimes if you're not writing under the headings, if you're just writing a general paragraph, it gets hard for the examiners to see where each specific, uh, each specific piece of information should be going. So I would, as with all of the other sections, be very strongly recommending you to write under headings. Uh, and we'll see what they are shortly. One of the other issues that we see is that people magically introduce uh, information in section C that they haven't referred to already. One of the things you want to have throughout your project is a through line. You want ideas that are introduced in section A to be discussed and developed and acted on in section B and then thought about in section C. So don't introduce a brand new idea or a brand new event that you haven't mentioned, uh, mentioned previously. As with all of the sections, avoid being too generic. You know, don't just give a list of the skills, for example. You know, give at least three or four of the skills and then give one or if you have space, two examples of how did you improve that skill? How did you develop that skill in the context of your particular project? And the final one is when you're talking about aspects of the course that people talk about, oh, there was five or six different parts of the course that filtered into this. That ends up just being a list of names, which doesn't show any real engagement with the ideas of the course. So I'm recommending to my own students, at least, to take one, maybe two, uh, but ideally one key thinker or key concept from the course and illustrate it as best you can in the space available, how it influenced your project and how your thoughts on that idea developed. So there's one little caveat here, one little warning, as we'd say, that this is the one area of the citizenship project where the marks the layout of the marks rather did actually change from the first to the second year. Now we know that with data we know that don't rely on a very small sample size but originally it was you know, five subheadings four marks each in 2019 they changed it to giving greater emphasis to knowledge and insights gained and to skills developed with six marks each leaving two clumps of four for the other three subheadings. So things have uh, been manipulated a little bit in this area and what does it mean for 2020 and beyond well we just don't know we have to wait and see uh, as with all of the marking schemes that the uh, department of education and the sec publish they say this might not be the scheme next year so there's always a warning that you can't take these things uh, for granted but in the absence of any better information i suppose we work on the information from last year as always we go back to the bible we go back to page three of our citizenship report booklet and we say what are we actually being asked to do here and again my old friend the maximum of 300 words approximately again a, a clash here that makes it more difficult to know have we got a bit of leeway or have we not uh, and if i find out i'll let you know but as of the moment we don't have an answer to that uh, but more importantly we have very clear and specific instructions that are 
uh, tough to follow because they're so specific, but uh, which you really have to, to key into as soon as possible. So we have three areas that break down into a number of different aspects. So our knowledge, uh, insight to knowledge of the course is our first major issue. The list of skills we developed is relevant, and I would be, as it suggests here, I would be trying to show how the skills you, you, you discuss here illustrate how you worked with others and how you were personally effective. And that might be as simple as saying, I was most personally effective when or I was least personally effective when. Um, and that's just something to bear in mind that they haven't emphasized that in the marking scheme up till now, but it's there. So it's something you should be cognizant or something you should be aware of if at all possible. And then the last three uh, points there that are in the third bullet point, we have reflection, feedback and learning from the course. In some ways, these are all linked together because uh, you reflect upon your feedback and you link it to the course. And so there is an overlap in these areas, but I'll, be, I'll highlight to you what the best way to lay that out is in the next slide. So here's the marking scheme. It's 20 marks overall, six marks, six marks, four marks, four marks. And these effectively are the headings you should be writing under. I'd write knowledge and insights to save yourself three words, skills, reflection, and then feedback and learning. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward under those headings. How much should you write? Well, we can work that out with our basic numeracy. We know that the word count is the problem. We have 300 words for this section. So six marks is about 90 words. Uh, and the four mark sections are about 60 words. If you go a little bit over in one area, you're going to have to pay it back later. So I would try to be extremely uh, efficient. I would try to be extremely disciplined with my word count when I'm talking about these things. There's no wiggle room here. You have to be on the money the whole time. Let's take a look at some examples. And my goal here is to work through three examples with you so you can see just how to progress your work from uh, mediocre, fine, H four grade up into the, the top echelons. So what you should do now is pause the video uh, and have a read through this and see what's uh, what the student is talking about. And it's to do with topic number three, which is the around the issue of fake news in the media. Uh, and the two two of the uh, of the section C's we'll look at will be the same title. So pause the video uh, and have a read through it and then see how you would mark it under those different headings. And we'll see here that the opening section are uh, our section C. We can do our little pointer here. Uh, our, sec our, our, our first section here, the knowledge and insights, is uh, quite short. For a six mark section, it's kind of strange that this should be so short. Uh, and it is pretty much a, a general summary. It doesn't give gr any great insight. You know, one thing you might say here is this changed my attitude to the issue because uh, the most important thing I learned was uh, and while it's not a regurgitation of your your key research findings it's how did the whole project uh, change your your perspective the skills are, are much stronger here and the uh, the idea of teamwork good leadership vital skill uh, he mentions another thing a further skill which improved while well, uh, my project was my research skills now the one thing i would say here is that this is a very inefficient way to describe the skills and if i've said to you you know you can list off some of the skills and describe one or two in detail a further skill which improved while i was doing my project that's effectively 10 words that could be more efficiently used elsewhere so it's fine it gets him full marks but it stops him from writing in more detail in some of the other areas and then our reflection and feedback we don't have our headings uh, so how are we to know uh, if we're the examiner it makes it more tricky for them to find out what we're talking about and is it I can honestly say that after finishing the project, I feel that creating the website was the best action to use for the project as it was a great way of distributing information. And that's that's a valid piece of reflection. But, you know, this is a student who has underwritten. He has 12 words to play with. That's effectively a sentence that he could have added in to bump up any of these sections. And so 3622 two gets 13 out of 20, which is 65%, which is a H4. He has completely, also completely neglected the idea of his being personally effective. Now, it's kind of implicit in some of what he says, but it doesn't go all the way. And then particularly look at the last kind of three and a half lines. Uh, and we'll jump into here, this section here. The members of my group said my organizational skills were useful for keeping us on course. When I finished this project, I definitely learned the skill of carrying out very detailed research. This isn't telling me anything new. Uh, 
This isn't addressing any specific part of the course, it's just rehashing or going back over some of the skills that he's already talked about and he's already got full marks for. So this again is an example of inefficiency in the in the writing up of this section. It's fine, it gets a, a H4, but you really want to be pushing forward as much as you can in these sections. Again, this is the same uh, the same general topic, a, a different student, uh, and first thing I notice straight away is that we have our headings, uh, knowledge and insights, skills developed, reflection, feedback, uh, and uh, learning from the course, although we hasn't labelled it in the same way. Now, again, pause this, read through it, and see what marks you would give it in terms of being more focused on the topics. And here there is definitely an improvement. The insights are more substantial and more specific. Uh, the skills developed, even though it's pretty short, it does mention a number of specific skills, and that seemed to be an area they were marking quite generously. Uh, and our reflection uh, and feedback and learning, uh, they're, you know, they're reasonable. Uh, they don't. They talk. The reflection. He says, reflecting on my project helped greatly. I had to edit my my write-up a lot. Uh, but editing is more of a skill than a reflection. As time passed, I ended up changing a lot of what I had written. Again, that's the process, not the thinking about it. Uh, so he might have said, you know, he used that to go and reevaluate the project as he was going along. He looked wanted to learn from his mistakes. He had, you know, developed uh, new insights which made them go back and look at the core material, the core research uh, at the end and take a different perspective. So there's some of the ways he could have, could have uh, highlighted that one. Uh, the feedback and learning, I, I think, is probably a little bit better than the mark here. Two out of four, it's, it's pretty substantial. Uh, he was given feedback by his, t his teacher, his peers and his family. They helped a lot when it came to narrowing down my research. Uh, feedback when it came to the focus group and advice when it came to writing, writing on my project. Maybe it could be a little bit more specific. You could take one specific area and explain why, uh, but I think that's pretty strong and I might have given it a mark or two higher, but then again, um, the SEC didn't ask me to do it. So um, there we go. And then I'm going to show you a, a much stronger example where the full the full word count is, is, is used, uh, where the thought process is better. So again, pause the video here, read through this and see what marks you would have given it. And here we go then, we have, clearly we have our knowledge and insights are an awful lot more uh, robust uh, and it talks about the different organisations and it comes back to um, a very specific personal point at the end there which I like. One of the people that was interviewed in the course of this project, it's the same one as in section A, said that uh, I just wanted to be like my friends. I wanted to be seen as a teen. Due to this, I did a lot of reflection. Now, I think this last line could have been more effectively popped down here, but it's a very strong personal statement to have here. I just want to be like one of my friends. It's, a, it's an effective way of showing how her attitude of this idea changed. So then the skills developed, they're not massively um, massively detailed, but they do link to other parts that uh, that we that she'd already discussed in previous parts of her in previous sections of the of the project. So she talks about how she you know how she drafted her questionnaire and captured the fair responses. And I think the word fair there is important because it shows she's trying to be balanced. Another skill she improved was her organizational management. So there's in a, in a relatively short space of time, she talks about four different skills and it's very clear that she actually links these to the previous ideas. Um, reflection, she is three out of four for this reflection, uh, although I don't see it being massively better than the last one. But the project gave me opportunity to take time out to evaluate data and come up to my own, come up with my own conclusions that before I didn't think were critical in providing education and for all in our society like transport. So, you know, she does, it is very clearly linked to what she was doing. Um, and again, the learning and feedback section here uh, is quite substantial. It's quite, um, uh, quite relevant to what she was doing, the feedback on her questionnaire. Um, I suppose this could be, you know, it's hard to know how to really improve this section, uh, but in some ways, you know, she talks about the feedback from her teacher and she took it on board. So I, I actually can't for the life of me see how, how, how you would improve that. And she focuses in then on Martha Nussbaum from the course and the social minimum. So she's talked about very specific ideas from the course uh, and opportunities for all. Uh, and I, you know, I think that's a three out of four is a pretty harsh mark. I'd have given that 19 out of 20. So then quickly to summarize this section, 
it's clearly the most challenging to fit your information into the 300 words available. You have to be disciplined and keep to the word count and not give any extra extraneous information. Uh, the more personal engagement, as with all the other sections, the more obvious it is that it's you and not some generic piece of writing, the better. Uh, don't just uh, give one or two ideas. Give a short list, for example, of skills and be specific in how in how you're linking those to your earlier ideas and then reflect upon the ideas that you've previously undertaken in the different parts of the project. That just leaves me to wish you the best of luck with your submission. Don't forget to visit the website to download the various resources for the Citizenship Project on www.palsockpodcast.com and you can follow along on at khpalsock on Twitter and at palsockteachers if you're one of the teachers on Twitter as well.